Hey everyone, Horror Hattie here. Today I'll be discussing my love for Studio Ghibli, one of my favorite film studios. I simply don't think a better film lineup exists. The overwhelming majority of their films are top tier. Their movies have such charm and magic in the worlds created. I have undergone the task of pitting every single one of them against each other in this ranking. If you are interested in watching the Ghibli lineup, HBO Max has every single film other than Grave of the Fireflies. Obviously, spoilers are ahead, so proceed with caution. All timestamps will be included, so if there's a film you don't want spoiled, simply skip ahead to the next film in the lineup. For reference, I use a 5 point rating system. Okay, Number 23, My Neighbors the Yamadas, 0.5 stars. If I wasn't watching every single film in Studio Ghibli's lineup, I would have dropped this one immediately. The art style is really off-putting. I feel like very little effort was put into this, and that's my main problem with it. This is an anthology, and it repeats the same plot points a lot and acts like it's a new concept on top of it. The mother can only make the same meal multiple days in a row for so many scenes. It was incredibly tedious. Speaking of the mother, she reminds me of Steven Universe at times. They're similar in appearance. The only compliment I can give this film is its use of a case of Rasera. I don't personally even consider this a Ghibli film considering the quality. Don't waste your time on this one, it's going for comedy, but just literally watch any other comedy film instead. Number 22, Earwig and the Witch, 0.5 stars. I really prefer when Studio Ghibli sticks to the classic 2D animation style. This just doesn't do it for me. The difference is colossal. This is one of three films that Goro Miyazaki directed. His works tend to be notably worse than that of his father's. This film is what comes of nepotism. The worst part about this is that it's not even a complete film. There is no real resolution. It felt like a work in progress. I will say, it was really funny when Baby Erwig was abandoned in front of the adoption center, unswaddled, on top of a stone staircase. I honestly don't think Erwig's mother cared if she died or not. In the ending credits, there's a sketch of Erwig watching Howl's Moving Castle on the TV. It just reminds you of how you could be watching that instead of this. If you want a Studio Ghibli film about a witch, just watch Kiki's Delivery Service instead. Number 21, Ocean Waves. 0.5 stars. Imagine if the first thing someone says to you is, can I borrow some money? That's what this movie is. This girl is horrible. She physically assaults her love interest multiple times as well. At least he fights back once. I don't know why you'd want to watch lame high school drama, but this is full of it. The most disturbing part of this is when non-consensual photos of a student were being sold. Avoid. Number 20, Only Yesterday, 1 star. This is such a slow and boring film. This doesn't have that Ghibli magic. It's a very mature and slow paced film. That's the nicest way I can think of putting it. You might appreciate this if you're older. Own a home, twice divorced, kids grown older. Number 19, Tales from Earthsea. Two stars. This is another one of Goro's works. The whole draw of this one is that dragons, however, they're barely in this. It definitely needed more of that. This has a really strong start, but goes down from there. My favorite thing about this film is definitely the villain. He is so fine. <laughs> he speaks in ASMR too, just my type. <laughs> He gets his arm sliced off at one point, which is brutal. I really hate how part of the plot centers around a child sex trafficking ring. I go to the fantasy genre to escape reality. I don't want to think about things like this. Some of my more minor complaints include how at one point they call a llama a horse and ride it like a horse when it's clearly a llama. Number 18, Porco Rosso. Two and a half stars. This had some really sweet and comedic moments in here. I think this film is a good representation of survivor's guilt, so if that's something you're struggling with, I recommend checking this out. Gina is my favorite character. I love her charm. Fio is great too. She's an incredibly hard worker and is in such a complex field, engineering, while still being a child. 
I don't like how much of a pushover she is, though. Hayao Miyazaki clearly has a strong passion for all things aviary. He includes it in at least once in all of his works. I, however, do not particularly care about this. This film mo mostly focuses on that. The main character is not likable. He is a sexist pig, after all. Just because he's better than some of the other characters doesn't mean he's a good lead. I really do not enjoy the instances of misogyny and pedophilia included. I also didn't like the open ending. Number 17. Pompoko. Two and a half stars. <sighs> this is the one with testicles being used as parachutes. Yeah. I love the environmentalist message here. It's included in a lot of the Ghibli lineup and I really enjoy it. However, this is the worst one with that message, so just watch the other films instead. This had a lot of funny moments other than the gross out humor. I'm really not a fan of that. I think this has an excellent representation of death. My favorite characters were Oroku and Ryotaro, the pretty boy fox. This is so good but so bad at the same time. And the bad outweighs the good. They were doing too much with the goddamn ball sex. I'm all for animals having anatomically correct genitalia in film, however I do not agree with these animals stretching out their balls to insane dimensions. Transforming them into different objects and multiple animals laying around on one of their balls. I'm sure they're doing this to be humorous, but you'd have to have the humor of a middle school boy to find this funny. Haha, <laughs> balls is simply immaturity. This also shows animals being killed, which I usually try to avoid. This also has absurd moments like the animals pulling a gun on one another. I never enjoy harsh switching to oversimplified art, it's just lazy, it takes you out of the film and demonstrates a low budget. Number 16, My Neighbor Totoro, two and a half stars. This is Ghibli's most overrated film. This film just kind of floats along as runtime, nothing too crazy is going on. This almost feels like a nothing film. This is the company's most iconic film, hell Totoro is even their logo. But that doesn't mean it's a good film. Yeah, you've heard Ghibli is amongst the best of the best and this is their signature, but that doesn't mean you should simply blindly slap a 5 star rating on it. Number 15, Grave of the Fireflies at 3 stars. This is the saddest film in their lineup. You just feel the anticipation building and building for when the little sister was going to die. It just kept getting pushed and pushed. I cried, that's for sure. I will never watch this film again. War is another common topic included in Ghibli films. This is a good film, but it's just so sad. Number 14 from Up on the Poppy Hill. Three stars. This had really high quality dialogue, and that was the best part of this. However, a huge part of the plotline was the young couple determining if their relationship was considered incest or not. Very strange and unnecessary. That's all I feel I need to say about that. Number 13, When Marnie Was There, three stars. This is a beautiful, queer, coming of age love story between two girls, Anna and Marnie. One draws portraits of the other in her spare time. They go on romantic boat rides. They dance together and embrace. I love yous are exchanged. Five stars. And we were queer baited. Barney is actually the ghost of Anna's grandmother. Now if we ship it, it's considered incest. Yay. In my version, the movie ends at the lighthouse scene near the end before the reveal. Three stars for what we got though. Number 12, The Secret World of Arietti, three and a half stars. This is Ghibli's take on a fae story tale. The animation took an upgrade here, which I really enjoyed. The visuals are great as always. This has a nice aesthetic. This is a creepy movie though. The scene where the boy spots Arietti in his room and whispers to her, ah! I would hate being the size of a barrera. I have an intense phobia of insects. They're already terrifying to me at their small size. Imagine if they were even bigger than me. I would live in a constant fear. <laughs> the weakest part of this film is the ending. 
Number 11, Princess Mononoke, four stars. This is one of my favorite environmentalist films. This has incredibly beautiful imagery, such as when vines and leaves start growing out of a gun. It's always a treat to see spirits portrayed in media. Their design is well done here. I was very pleasantly surprised to learn about the women-led village and their openness for sex work. Brothel girls are hired by the leader and given a great life where they eat whatever they want and don't face harassment from men. The only thing keeping me from giving this a higher rating is how intensely brutal a lot of the scenes are. I didn't enjoy seeing the intense violence against a particular wolf. It was very upsetting. There's also lots of corpses around and a scene where someone gets both of their arms sliced off with an arrow and decapitation is depicted as well. The human harm and death doesn't bother me, but still, I wasn't expecting that level of severity. Number 10, The Wind Rises, four stars. I have a feeling this was Miyazaki's favorite film to make. I really love the fashion showcased here. This story has two stories within. One side focuses on the love story, while the other side focuses on working on planes. The love story is so amazing. The Avery aspect, on the other hand, boring. It takes up so much of the screen time, too. My only complaint with the romance is how the husband couldn't resist smoking even next to his sick wife, actively worsening her condition. He loves her, but he loves smoking even more. The ending left something to be desired, too. Number 9, Panyo. Four stars. Panyo was actually my first film from Studio Ghibli. I went to go see it with my dad in an almost empty theater late at night. It was one of my few memories I have with him. That sounds sad, but don't worry, it's a good thing. Anyways, onto the film itself. Mm. Panyo's dad, so fine. I want you. I love men in makeup. Plus, he's a dilf. If he was real, I would not be interested though because he's six foot five. If I saw him in real life, I'd be scared, not bricked up. I'm scared of tall people. Sorry, Fujimoto. This is a cute, good film. The pacing of this is bad in the middle, though. I thought Ponyo's siblings looked pretty goofy. I wasn't a fan of their design. Number 8. Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind. 4.5 stars. If you want to see a female protagonist written incredibly well, watch this film. I wish more people were like Nausicaa. She has such a kind spirit. Master Yupa is great too. The CGI was bad. I didn't enjoy Asba's character and would have simply preferred if they chose to develop Nausicaa and Yupa's relationship instead and cut him out. As a side note, the fox squirrel reminds me of what a baby cat bus would look like. Number 7, Castle in the Sky, 4.5 stars. The two leads have amazing chemistry together. Pazu has a very cute accent. They cast his voice actor very well. Shita, on the other hand, I wasn't so much a fan of her voice. This was really cute and humorous. Very cute and humorous film. Studio Ghibli has this trend where they'll make up perfectly good movies, but then BAM. Misogyny. BAM. Incest. BAM. Pedophilia. The list goes on. In this film, it's pedophilia. A bunch of grown-ass pirate men want Shita, who is obviously a child. There's also some pretty intense violence against children. Shita getting pulled around by her hair, Pazu gotten getting shot in the face. Older Ghibli certainly had its dark moments. Number six, The Tale of the Princess Kaguya. Four and a half stars. This film tells such a beautiful story. It is also such a different art style from what we're used to, but here it's done well. This is a slower paced film, but it's very much worth it. It's a story of tragedy. I feel so bad for Princess Kaguya. She was forced to do so many things she didn't want to do. 
Almost every man in her life was horrible to her. This made me cry at the end and it raises a good question. Is it better to have lived through traumatic experiences or to have never have lived and experienced anything at all? In my opinion, it's better to not be able to experience any emotions at all. This is coming from someone who isn't through trauma though. What do you guys think? Number five, Kiki's delivery service, four and a half stars. The plot here is simply a young witch who lives on her own for a year in order to advance her craft. She makes deliveries with her cute cat companion, Gigi. His lover, Lily, and their kittens are very cute too. This is just such a relaxing, easy film. It was so cute seeing Kiki Suter wait for her out in the rain. The elderly lesbian couple were definitely a highlight here. My only complaints are I wish the witches didn't have to leave home at such a young age. They're just kids. I think 18 or 21 would have been a more appropriate age. Kiki's too young to be worrying about a partner, especially as she's fulfilling her witch duties. Let kids be kids and enjoy their fleeting childhoods. Number four, Whisper of the Heart, four and a half stars. I would be overjoyed if a cute random cat accompanied me on a train ride. Moon the Vagabond Cat is my favorite character here. This is a great film if you're struggling to find your place in life. The romance in this one is also one of the best. What's really unique and interesting about this film is that it's the only one that has a sequel. The main character writes, The Cat Returns. As a side note, this is where the lo-fi beats to study and chill to livestream loop originates from. I don't like how the plot of this film is based on the country roads take me home song. I'm not a fan of it. Number three, The Cat Returns, four and a half stars. How badly I yearn to transform into a cat girl and enter a secret cat society. This is the film for escapism. The romance here is just mwah, chef's kiss. <laughs> the only reason I'm docking half a star is because of the ambiguous ending. I wish the rate relationships were even more developed, but I can't complain too much because what we did get was still amazing. Number two, Hell's Moving Castle, four and a half stars. This is one of my favorite love stories. Hal isn't even Sophie's soulmate, the term turnip princess, yet she still chooses him. It's just such a beautiful romance. I can't believe how ahead of its time this was too, it came out in 2004. I wasn't a fan of all the side characters, but it was easy to ignore. Number one, Spirited Away, five stars. This is the only Studio Ghibli film with a perfect score in my book. Most of them are spectacular, but this is flawless. This is full of lovable characters. This has Haku, my favorite, a dragon river spirit, No Face, a goth and rich spirit, Yibaba with her fashion sense, the list goes on. The story here really shines. I love the bond between Haku and Chihiro. Well, what do you think of my list? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. I'll be posting another video with this format on the Child's Play slash Chucky series by the end of this month, so subscribe and hit the bell if you'd like to be notified when it comes out. If you want to read my full reviews, check out my loader box, link below. I'm also interested in your ranking, so be sure to list them, or even just your favorite and why you like it. I worked really hard on this video, so please leave a like and subscribe for more rankings as well as other content. If you'd like to support my channel financially, please consider becoming a patron. I have tiers starting as low as $2 a month. This is my first video released on YouTube, so your support this early on would mean so much to me. I even have a Patreon exclusive video up already about how I set my brand up for success. Check out the link in the description for more info on exclusive perks. Until next time, mwah.